Hello and welcome everybody! In this video, I'm going to show you how to reproduce one of the best mobile games ever. And no, I'm not talking about the Angry Birds. I'm talking about something much older and much better. I'm talking about one of the games that started the whole mobile gaming industry. I'm talking about the snake game. You know, that little bastard going around the screen trying to eat, get fatter, bigger and faster. Well, today we're going to reproduce that game using only Python. So let's get started. If you're new here, let me introduce myself. My name is Danny Jax and in this channel, it's my purpose to help you learn and improve your abilities using Python so you can actually use that to improve in your career and in your life. And today, we're going to use the game development so we can learn a bunch of cool stuff that we can do with Python. And before going into the code, let's look at some of the skills that you will pick up by just doing this project. So we're going to develop this snake game and we're going to be using Python and a module that's called Curses. If you're not familiar with the game, let me just walk you through it really quickly. We start with a screen that's not moving, it's like a static screen. And you got a snake, which you can control to go in four directions. You can go either up, down, left or right. And there's one piece of food and when you grab it, then the snake grows a little bit and, the, and the, there's another piece of food that spawns somewhere else. And pretty much the whole point of this is to eat as much as you can without crashing into the wall or into yourself. The best way to tackle this kind of projects is to kind of break them up into small pieces and just kind of do one of them each one at a time. You know, kind of divide and conquer strategy. The first thing we're going to do is kind of set up the stage for everything that we're going to do. So we're going to implement our game screen. We're going to use the module called Curses, which allows you to manipulate the terminal using Python. It's pretty cool and you can add color and you can do a lot of stuff which we're going to look at. So we're going to learn how to use that module and then we're going to manipulate the terminal to kind of build what we want, which is the stage for our game. The second step is we're going to implement our snake. We're going to look at how we're going to do it and we're going to control it using the keyword inputs. So our user can actually say where it wants to go because without the input of game, it's nothing, right? The next thing, we're going to check for collisions. This is pretty much how to end the game. So if the snake crashes into the wall or the snake crashes into itself, then, you know, it's game over. The next step is going to be to handle everything related to the food. And the first thing is to create it. And this is very interesting because we're, we have to do it randomly. We want the food to be created in different places every single time. The second thing related to the food is actually handling the collision, which means when the snake eats this piece of food and how we're going to handle it and everything that we need to do. Finally, we're going to add the score so we can, you know, keep track of how good our player is actually doing. And for that, we're going to learn how to add text and even better and um, very cool thing. We're going to learn how to change the attributes of the stuff in the terminal, such as the color. So as you can see, this is a very fun project to do. And, you know, let's just get started. Step one is going to be to import the module Curses. And as I mentioned it earlier, this is a module that is going to allow us to manipulate the terminal and just kind of do anything that we want. We can write text, we can set the pointer to some different place, clear it. There's a lot of stuff that you can do. You can add colors and we're going to go through it very shortly. Then we're going to set up kind of this template to do it that is recommended to use with the Curses module. So just hang on with me. We're going to define the main function. And inside that function, we're going to use this standard screen parameter. This is the Curses best practice. And actually, we're going to need to, to wrap it all with the Curses.wrapper. And inside of that, we're just going to call our main function. The wrapper here is actually used because since we're going to manipulate the terminal, if we have any sort of error during the execution of a program, the, the whole terminal is going to be screwed up. So the, the error message that we would get, like kind of a value error or something wrong, it's going to be all messed up. To fix that is to use the wrapper that's coming in with the Curses module. And this way, everything will be terminated correctly. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to clear our screen. And think about it, we just launched the game and we don't want any text in the terminal kind of screwing around. So we're just going to clear the screen and then we're going to define a new window. And for that, we're going to need to figure out how big we want them to be. So we're going to say like screen height, and that's going to be 30. And then we're going to say screen width, and we're going to define that to 90. So we can have some kind of a landscape uh, size, but you can pretty much put whatever size you like. And then we're going to define a new screen and we're just going to call it like something like when it's our new window. And we're going to say curses, new window. 
And this function allows us to create a new window and requires four different parameters, which are going to be the four corners of the screen that we want. The first one is the maximum height. The next one is the maximum width and then the starting points. So we're going to say screen height plus one screen width plus one zero comma zero. I used the plus one in the maximum value so we can use our variables sh and sw for everything that we want to create inside of the screen. It'll be easier this way. Now let's think about what we want. Our first step was to create a window and we have it, but we want our user to be able to see it. So we want to add some kind of a border to it. And this is very simple to do. We can just say when border, oh wait, box border, and that's all. By just calling this function, then the whole module is going to create it for us. And now we could actually launch it, but nothing is going to happen. Like if I launch it here, it's just going to exit because we're not saying like, you know, keep it. So it's being launched and it's ending and nothing happens. So what we need to do here is like add this while loop. And inside this while loop, we're going to be listening to when something it's clicked. So if we're going to say like, if the user clicks on some certain key, then we're going to quit. Otherwise, we're just going to keep the window running. That's what we're going to do here. So we're going to listen on our window like this get character, which is pretty much saying that curses our program is just listening to whatever keys are being pressed. And we're storing it in this variable named key. Now, if key happens to be Q, then we're going to break out of the loop and everything is going to end. But otherwise, it's just going to keep running. That's the whole beauty of this. And now we need something else. We need to tell our window to be you know, listening for, for keystrokes. So we're going to use this keypad and say true. And that way we're just making our window capable to listen to keystrokes. And if we run it, this should launch a screen with the border right there. And it's not getting close, as you can see. If I press Q, it should end. And there we go. The process is finished. So. Our next step is to build a snake. And for this, we need to be very clear on how we're going to do it and how the snake is going to work. So let, let me just kind of go through how we're going to implement the snake. So if we think about our game screen, it's going to be something like this, right? We need to set up a starting point for our snake, which to make it easier is going to be here. And then our snake is going to move in the right direction by default. One other thing to keep in mind is that our snake is going to be moving constantly even if no one is pressing any key so if the last stroke was right the snake is going to keep moving to the right until it crashes or we get another direction like up then it'll move up until we get another direction so it's kind of constantly moving and our snake is going to have initial length so in this case we're going to make our snake have three pieces and that's the way we're going to kind of represent the snake so this is going to be the head and this is going to be the tail. And that's the way we're going to implement it. And I just wanted to show you this because it's going to come into the game how the snake moves later. But first, let's move back into the code and implement this and just build our snake. Now that we understand how we're going to implement it, we can actually do it. And the first thing we're going to do is set up the coordinates for where the snake is going to be starting, the starting position of the snake. So that means the X and the Y coordinates. On X, we're going to be at the one fourth of the screen, as we mentioned before. So that's going to be screen width over four. The function that we're going to use to draw requires an integer value. So we're just going to turn that into an integer using int. And then we're going to do a very similar thing for Y using height, but the height's going to be at half of the screen. And now we're going to use these coordinates so we can actually build our three pieces of the snake that we saw before. So let's call it snake. Then we're going to have a list and inside of there, we're going to have a tuple for each one of these points. And the, the reason we want to use a tuple is because it's not really going to change. Now, there's something here that you might have noticed, and th that is that I put the Y coordinate first and the X coordinate second, which is kind of weird if you're coming from a math background such as me. But when you're dealing with rendering and all this GUI and all this kind of stuff, the convention here is that actually the Y goes first and it's actually in the other way around. So the origin is the top left corner, like the, the maximum Y it's going to be at the bottom. Just remember that and the Y it's the first coordinate. So we have our three points that are going to be building our snake. Awesome. So we're moving along before we can actually test this. We we're going to make it move as well. 
One of the key elements of, of the design of this game is that the snake keeps moving constantly. And as the, that means at the beginning, it should start moving somewhere. As we saw before here with the get character, this is actually going to register a keystroke. And this may be a letter or this may be a direction. And Cursus has this key right, key left and all this kind of stuff. So you can actually use those. So we designed our starting movement to be to the right. And now we're going to define a new head of the snake and I'm just going to call it new head. It's going to be based off the current head, which is actually uh, snake zero new head. Sorry about the writing. It's kind of weird for me. <laughs> okay. So if it's to the right, then X is going to be plus one. If it's to the left, it's going to be X minus one. If it's going to be up, then it's Y minus one. Because remember that this is my max Y. And this is my like my origin. It's going to be actually here. So this is X and this is Y. This is what we mentioned before that curses actually works this way. So if we're moving, moving up, y is going to be minus one if, and if we're moving down it's y plus one this is just the coordinate of the new head right so we can go here 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 or here and we're just going to implement the right one at the moment so we're moving right so if we want to change the x position that means that it's our second item in the turtle and as we mentioned before this is going to be plus one and this is going to give us a new position of the head of the head if we want to move the snake to the right. Now, we have a new coordinate, like a new piece of the snake that we need to add an actual snake. And we, this is our head. So it needs to go at the beginning. If you remember from our definition of the snake, this is the head. This is a second piece. This is a third piece. So our new head should be in position zero. And now we got our new point in the right location. So now we got a new head here and we need to get rid of this one. And this is much easier than moving the whole snake around. So we have three points. Instead of redefining them all to be one to the right, we're just gonna define a new one and drop the last one. This is gonna be much easier and faster to do. So now we can say snake.pop and that's just gonna drop the last item in our list. And the last thing we're going to do is actually draw. We've got to draw the new head. And the reason we're not drawing everything every single time is because this is going to be moving really fast. Like it's going to be refreshed. It's like a frame in a movie. What this means is that if you were to actually start this and go really slow frame per frame, the first two frames, you wouldn't have the complete snake. In the first frame, we're just going to draw the, the head. The second frame, we would draw the new head. So we would have two, two pieces. And in the third frame, we draw a new head and now we have the three pieces. In order to draw something into our window, we need obviously the window where we want to draw it. And then we're going to say add character. And for that, we're going to need three things. We need, we need the Y position, the X position and what character you actually want to write. So there's something that we actually need to do and we need to tell our window that it needs to be refreshed every given amount of time. And for that, we're going to use window.timeout. And then inside of here, you got to go milliseconds of how fast you want this to be refreshed. So I'm going to use 100, but this again, this is just kind of a number that you can pick and just play with and just tune to whatever you like. Now let's give it a go and see if that actually works. There we go. We have a snake, although it's actually just adding new pieces. So this actually brings out a way that curses works. And as you can see, we just draw and it's not redrawn, redrawing anything. So what we need to do is once we pop the tail, we need to draw an empty space there. We're going to store the tail here and then we're going to use the same, same function here to actually draw on top of it. And I think this, this will make sense as we go. And, that, and instead of this, we're just going to draw an empty space and that way we're going to be erasing the last, so the tail that's been popped off. And if we draw it, now we can see our snake moving to the right. Hell yeah. And it's going to get to the end and nothing's going to happen. It's probably just going to crash. So now if we look back at our, you know, plan, next thing to do is actually check for collisions and end the game. If we hit a wall or hit the snake body itself. Awesome. So let's do this one at a time. The first thing we're going to do is just check if we 
bumped into one of the walls. So we're checking our Y position of the head, which is our first item. That's why I'm using zero in the first. And then Y is the first item. So we're going to do check if that is within our accepted range. So pretty much from zero to the height of the screen. And then the same, but for the X position using the width of the screen. And if we go here, it means we crashed. Yeah, we're going to call curses.end window. So that'll end the curses instance and our windows will print game over and then we'll quit our application. So we can try it and it should work like if we crash against the screen, which we can let just a snake get all the way to the right, we should get the end and the game over text and let's see. There we go. The application ended and we got the game over text. Pretty cool, right? Not difficult at all. Thank you, Python. But now we got to check if the this, this snake can crash against its, the, itself. And we'll add the code, but we'll not be able to test it until we have all directions. So let's do that. Let's add the direction, which actually it's something we needed to do anyway. So let's just copy all this stuff. And we got to copy it four times. We're just going to change this to LF. And instead of right, we'll say left. up and now awesome now one other thing that i noticed is that in my keyboard and maybe this is because i'm using like spanish or something else i don't know but they these these don't really work so i actually had to check what are the values for for the up arrow down arrow and all those so what i'm going to do is actually check for the values that i found to be for some reason in my keyboard they have a different different value so just uh you can do this pretty, very simple just check like print what is the key and just press it and if if it doesn't work for you you can add that it's very simple I'm sure you can do it. So that should work. And now we just need to change where the head of the snake is going to be placed. So we mentioned this and this, if, if this is going to be on the left, we need to change the Y position. And if it's on going up, we actually need to change this to minus one. And if this is going down, we actually change this to my plus one, get rid of this one. And this should actually make the, the trick, but Notice how we're handling two different variables. One is key and one is D. And the way this works, I mentioned this before, like key will get a minus one if nothing is pressed. So we actually need to add a little bit of code here that is going to handle that kind of specific uh, functionality. So if, if key is minus one, then our direction doesn't actually need to change. So we're just going to say D is equal to D. So if key is anything else that's not minus one, then we'll say that D is equal to key. And we'll change this to D and now everything will work. So we can quit the game using the Q or we can just handle all the directions up, down, left and right. I think that's all we need to get the directions to work. Let's give it a go and select the screen so it actually works. I can press up, left, down or right. But notice this, if I'm going to the right and I press left, I can do it, but it shouldn't, right? Because I should crash onto myself. So let's add that piece of the collision and then we're going to be pretty much ready with the step number two. We'll do this with a very simple if, actually very similar to what we already did. Let's think about what we need to do. So we have our list with all the positions of the snake. So we can say our head, which is the first position, right? And if that is in any other part of the snake without including the first one, then that means that the head is occupying the same space as some other part of the snake and then that means we just crashed onto ourselves so let's try that press here we run it and i'm just gonna press left and i just crashed onto myself onto myself so we got everything going on the step number two so we are now able to control the the snake with all the directions and we are able to check collisions against the wall and the body of the snake itself Awesome. I think you already have a pretty good idea of how we can implement the second part. So my uh, recommendation here is to pause the video and try to handle the food by yourself. You can create a food in a specific location and just check collisions. Try to make the snake eat it. And once you try that, just play the video and we'll do it again together. 
Now that you already tried, I hope you do it. I'll show you what I did for this. The way our game works in one important piece of design is that the game will start in a position that allows the player to actually succeed. So our snake is starting at the end of the screen, at the left side of the screen. So what we will do is we'll set a piece of food, like the first piece of food would always be in the same position. It'll be exactly in the middle of the screen. That means that if the player doesn't do anything, doesn't know how to play, he'll see something in the middle, like the food, and then without doing anything, the snake will eat it always by default. So that'll help us teach the player how to, how to play. So we're just gonna create our piece of food always in the center of the screen. And that should be pretty simple. We'll just say food, and we want to define a tuple with the position. And this will be just like the screen height over two, and then we'll do the same, but with the screen width. And remember to turn this into integers so it can actually be handled by our add character uh, function. And this will be just like food zero foot one. And then we got to do like what kind of character we want. And for me, I'm just going to use the O. So O is going to represent a piece of food. So we're going to check for collisions with the food. And we'll do it after we just added the new head. And this is actually very simple to do because we got the, the coordinates of the food and we got the coordinates of the head of the snake, right? It just moved here. So we know if the new position actually is the same. And that's pretty much it. Snake zero equal to food. Then it means that they're in the same position. For, so the snake just ate the food. When this happens, we're just going to set our food to none. So, but just by just setting the food to none, our program is now um, aware that the food doesn't exist anymore. And now we go into the next piece of code that we actually need to build a new one in a random position. And for that, we're going to need a new module, which is going to be import random. Awesome. And with this, we can create random numbers that we're going to use to create random positions for the snake, for the food, sorry. Our new food is going to be a tuple and it's going to be random dot random int and we need to give like the range within where we want the, the the random number to be created between what and what so we want this between zero and since this is the y direction the screen height if you remember at the beginning when we drew our screen we said plus one and uh, for for both of these so that's why we're actually we did it because that way everything else that we do we can use the screen height by itself instead of doing minus one everywhere and now we need to do the same but for the screen width very important thing to do this will create a new food but we got to check something before we actually add it and that is we need to check that the position that was uh, found is not already a position that's occupied by the snake if my new food which is a position is in snake, then our food is just going to be none. So we're going to set our new food to none, saying that that's not a valid food. But if it is, it is valid, then we'll say that the food is going to be equal to the new food. And that way, we're just kind of handling a non-valid food location. And there's something else that we need to do here. Okay, we're going to run all this while food is none. So we're saying we don't have a location for our food. I want to create one. And if the and if the new food is actually not valid, then we're not going to replace food. And this is going to be food is going to still be none. So we're going to actually try to create a new one. This will only end if we have a, a, a valid food location. So once we get out of the while, we're just going to, you know, draw it. So we're going to use our, our very reliable add character function. So I'm just going to copy it, put it here. And what I'm doing, I'm drawing my new food that is actually valid with a zero. And if we test it, once we eat the food, we should get a new one. Awesome. We get a new one. And this is great. You can see that we got one right at the end. So we need to do this minus one, minus one. Great, because that was right on the screen. So we cannot actually grab it. We are allowing zero to be a position of creation for the food, which it's, is the wall. So let's change this to one. So, so that doesn't happen. 
If you notice, when we ate the food, nothing happens, so the, the difficulty doesn't increase, and this is a never-ending game, so it's like anybody could play technically forever. And the way we're... so we need to change something. If we eat food, the snake should increase in size. So that means that this erasing of the tail, which is also linked to this, I'm actually going to put them together. So that part is just going to happen, like, if we didn't eat any food. So if we ate something, we're just not going to delete the tail and that's going to increase the size of our snake. And if we didn't eat anything, we'll erase it. And let's run it so you can see what I'm talking about. So we run. Once we eat it, we increase by one. You see? And if, if I eat another one, now I have five. So that way we're going to keep increasing without actually having to calculate the new the new position for the other part of the snake that we want and we can just take advantage of the one that we were gonna drop anyway this is a, just a way of making our code like sim code simpler and just saving work for ourselves <laughs> during the implementation now another thing that, that i like to do is to make the game go faster and we're gonna do that by reducing the timeout so we're gonna keep variable saying like velocity it's gonna be equal to 100 and this is gonna be our initial velocity here and Every time we eat a food, we're going to reduce that. And we're going to do that by saying window.timeout. And then we're going to say velocity times 0.95. Oh, 95. This might be sounding counterintuitive. Like we want to increase velocity while you're reducing this name. Remember that this is the time it takes to refresh the screen. So the smaller it is, the faster we're refreshing. So let, let's take a look. And just to make it clear, I'm just going to go like 0.8. So it's very obvious. We need to make this an integer. Sorry. And then I'm going to run it. And when I grab this, it's just going to start going faster. Let's not make it so hard. So I'm just going to go like 0.95. But feel free to just play with these numbers and just make it whatever you want. Make it your own. So that's pretty cool. And, and if you think about it, this is all the gist of the game. And I hope that you were able to implement this without looking at the code. But if you didn't, don't worry. At the end of this video, I'm going to give you a couple of challenges and that I actually recommend you do on your own. So you can like nail down on all these concepts and just internalize them on your head and you will be ready to go. All right. So now we got a full game and we just want to add the score. And for that, we're just going to keep a new variable. We'll call it what well, probably you you imagine the score is going to be equal to zero. And we need to draw it. And maybe you're thinking we're going to use the add character. But that's just for one character. So we're going to use a very similar function. And it's called add string. And it's got three parameters as well. So we need the y position, the x position, and the string that we want to add. So we'll just have like in the top somewhere we can see it. And, we'll, and the string that we want to add is actually score format and then we'll say score now we need to update it like if, if we run it even if we grab if we let the snake grab it our, our score is not changing so let's take care of that now so we know where it is like the snake ate the food right so we we are increasing velocity let's also increase the score we're just increasing by one you can increase by 10 by 100 i don't care it doesn't make any difference to be honest and then we're just going to draw it again and let's play it and test it so it's going to grab it and now it's going to change to one awesome last thing we're going to do and something that i really like and it's kind of tricky for cursors for some reason it's to change the color and this is an attribute of something that we're drawing on the screen in order to change the color of this we need to define what what is like a color pair and this is just the way cursors works we use this function called init pair and we have to um, set what is the foreground color and the background color. So for this case, I'm just going to use like uh, green and white, but feel free to use whatever colors you like. So we got our color defined and that's going to be identified by the number one here. And you can define as many as you want. Like you can do this and say, just remember to change the number. And then you can do green and red and you know, whatever. Just let your imagination run free. And in order to use it, you can go ahead and call the curses dot color pair. And this is where the colors are stored and you just need to give it the, the number that identifies it. So if I want to use this color pair, I press one. And if I want to use the other one, I can use it two. So this is the beginning and we need to do the same for the update. 
So I'll just copy and paste it here as well. And if we run it, we should be able to see it in a different color. As you can see, the score now it's on color green, looking pretty nice. And you can change that to whatever color you want. You can change the border as well. So if I want to change the border, I need to activate an attribute for everything. And that is done by calling like the window dot attribute on. And then you got to set what attribute you want. Let's change this to red just so it's like kind of different. And we'll say this like blue. So I'm going to change the attribute on to curses dot color pair and I'm going to call two. Then we'll draw the border and then we'll turn it off. Okay, so if I run it, you can see that now like the background is blue and the border is red. So just feel free. You can change the color of anything you like in this game and just make it your own and learn how to use the curses module, which is super powerful. So now you got a full working snake game, but there's a lot of things that you can actually do. And I have a couple challenges for you so you can actually reinforce what you learned and just prove to yourself that you can actually do this without looking at the solution before. So I got three challenges here. The first one is to change the character of the food, you know, just Instead of being a no, change it to something else. Make it a pie, make it a pea, make it something. If you're able to do that, move on to the next. When you can, where you can make actually the food have some time, expiration time. Like right now, this game, the food will stay there until you eat it or you die <laughs> or, or the snake dies. But you can add some timing to it. Like let, let's say 10 seconds. So if the user, like if your player doesn't eat it, then that food is going to expire and it's going to be drawn in another place that is just going to make the game more interesting and the last one is to add a level 2 screen the way this works is when the user gets to 10 score then we'll add some walls on the left and some walls on the right so our user got the score equal 10 then we're just gonna create a new screen and instead of having nothing we'll just add like two walls here and now it's going to be harder because the snake can crash into those walls and also on the borders the tutorial is going to end here, but I'll leave a key for you. So if you look down on the description below, there's going to be two links. The first one is going to be for the code that you're looking at right now. The one that you just built together, which, which gets you the, the full working game. And the second one is going to be my version of these changes and challenges that I just mentioned. What I suggest you to do is just to do it by yourself first. Don't look at the solution and only use it once you're done or if you're really stuck. But this will help you internalize and just kind of use these tools by yourself, which will just avoid you tutorial hell. I hope you enjoyed recreating the snake game and these challenges that I had for you. Let me know in the comments how it went for you or if you implemented some other challenges that were not mentioned here. That's all for this video. Don't forget to smash the like button. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.